Hello, everyone. How are we? Hello, hello. Okay, we are going to get going here in just a moment. I'm just getting everything set up and we will be good to go. I see a lot of familiar faces and new. All right, so while I wait for everything to get going, where are you located into the chat? Camp, okay. All right, we have Missouri, New Jersey, South Carolina, Las Vegas, Ohio, San Jose, Washington, Texas, see a lot of familiar faces and even some old faces on tonight. Roseville, California, Dallas, Texas. Fantastic. Okay, and who is already wholesaling land? Has anyone or just done any kind of land investing? Doesn't even just have to be wholesaling. Florida, okay. See anyone already doing it or who's new? Scottsdale, Arizona, yes. No deals yet, like the wording yet. Okay. All right. Now, are you is anyone doing any other types of strategies outside of land? Are you wholesaling? Are you doing rentals? Are you doing flips? I like to get to know the audience just a little bit. I have two parcels I've owned for five years. Fantastic. Okay. New. All right. I love seeing everyone come on camera. I like to get to know you guys. Okay. Oh, here we go. Have done one wholesale. Fantastic. Wholesaling, but always looking at land. Yes. Single family rentals and new. Okay. Laura, are you ready to get going? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. So, I'm well, good. Um, go ahead. We, uh, I'm kind of improvising here, guys. So to tell you the truth, I'm uh, heading home in my RV and, uh, some plans fell through, so I had to stop in the parking lot <laughs> at the Target to do this presentation tonight. But, you know, I'm showing up and I'm here and I want to make sure that we get you the great information. Now, we're going to keep the slides, kind of keep us going into a topic, you know, so that we don't stray too much away from what we're talking about. However, I am going to talk over these slides quite a bit. So with that said, make sure you take plenty of notes because, you know, Honestly, I'm going to talk a lot from my own experience, and I'm not going to go through a structured presentation per se. So, Liz, let's get going. You have the control of the slides. Yep. You'll just have to tell me when to move things around. Okay. So, yeah, um, we have an ebook uh, that is something that we share that is about real estate investing in general. Some of the things we talked about today, we're going to talk about land, but obviously residentials, houses, multifamily, a lot of the same things as far as getting the leads are in this book. So my suggestion is free. And uh, I'm sorry, there is a fly here. <laughs> it's free. And uh, um, go ahead and download it because it will give you a lot of the good information. We just rewrote the book not too long ago. So this is a brand new ebook. Okay, great. Now let's talk about you. And I want to know specifically when it comes to investing with land, because that's what we're going to talk about today, right? Why are you interested in land investing? So go ahead and type in the chat. And Liz, if you can read some of the chats to me, that would be great. Yep. Just give them time to type it out real quick. So why land? Okay, I want lots of farms. I love it. No house to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interested in another strategy. Okay, trying to add a new expertise. Okay. Long-term investing, like new construction and subdivisions. Okay, I've heard people talking about land in our area, so I want to learn more. Yeah, I, I mean, to try tiny home development. 
at the end of the day, there is only so much land, right? And they're not going to make any more of it, as they say. So you can never go wrong with land. And uh, just to share with you a personal story, actually, here. And uh, I know a lot of you know me already. I see a lot of familiar names and faces here. But I actually uh, was born in Italy. And uh, I found out later in my years that my dad was actually in real estate. And he was a land developer. And that's where he made his fortune in Italy. He took all this land that was agricultural and he zoned the commercial and residential and made a ton of money. Unfortunately, also, he didn't know how to deal with stress. He didn't know about mindset. And he died at the age of 44 from a heart attack because of stress. However, moral of the story is that he had a lot of land and he went into that. I didn't even know he was in real estate until I was in my 20s. So that was interesting to know. But that's why he made a lot of money. So any of you that are interested in land, honestly, you can wholesale land, you can develop land, you can do constructions, you can do so much with land. Also, you get huge tax breaks. We're gonna talk about some of the example here with tax breaks this evening as well. So there is so much you can do with land. So it's really a rare commodity. So Liz, you wanna share a little bit about you and then I can share about me. Yeah, I don't have a ton of knowledge in invest or land investing. I've only done one land deal ever, so I'm not going to take up a lot of time. This is more of Laura's thing. But just so you kind of get to know us, we are a mother-daughter duo, uh, investing duo. I wholesale virtually. I'm the co-founder of Real Estate Investing Women. I started investing in 2015, so I hit nine years this month, actually. I closed my first deal nine years ago. The one really cool thing about what I do is I do everything completely virtual. So even that one land deal I did was completely virtual. It was right outside of Orlando. That means I've never had to like tour a property, talk to sellers in person, um, talk to buy like in person, like show homes, anything like that. My whole business is built completely virtual. Um, why I got into real estate is in 2015, I went through a divorce. I pretty much lost everything overnight. And I was broke, like past broke, so broke that they joked about it one time when they interviewed me on the news because the news anchor became a student after the first interview. So on the second interview, they laughed and said she was broke. I was very, very broke. And I was this, I'm a single mother. So that's my beautiful little boy there. And I really wanted to figure out how to make money. And it was just more of a means to an end. And then fast forward now, I've done millions of dollars in wholesale deals. I oversee 19 real estate clubs. I've done every deal completely virtual that I wanted to wholesale. I organize real estate summits and retreats. I've been featured in the news, like I mentioned, multiple times in newspapers. And I mentor students across the country and world. We have some acro um, across the pond over there. And I'm still a single mom doing her thing. So I just want to keep mine very, very short. Um, just because this isn't really my expertise, I'm going to leave it to Laura. But of course, I'm on here as REAW, and I see a lot of beautiful faces that I recognize, um, and I hope to get to know the rest of you. All right, Laura, that's probably the quickest I've ever done my story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to make it very brief because I see a lot of you that are very familiar with us. But for the one who don't know me, like I said, I actually grew up in Italy. And I grew up in a family that was with real estate. You know, my own dad was in real estate, mainly land development and commercial, uh, built some of the hotels that eventually got sold to Sheraton and Marriott, and also developed agricultural land that got a rezoned into residential and built uh, a whole city has been built with on this land. There was nothing there 50, 60 years ago when I was there, and now it's a whole town built into it. So I've been exposed to land, and I see what I've done for people around me. Now, let's fast forward. I came to America in 85, and uh, I actually didn't start really investing in land until um, in the mid-90s. So I started real estate back in 87. And the first example, and I think we're going to share this slide here uh, in a moment about I had purchased this home and uh, it was a foreclosure and there was a vacant lot next to it. And uh, I said to myself, yeah, that one there. And I said to myself, you know, I says, wonder, you know, and I own the house. You can see a little bit to the right there, fixing it up. And I said, wonder who owns this land? And I came across this property and I found who the owner was. And I also found out that there was, uh, um, this land was coming up for auction for tax. So we're gonna talk about that here in a little while about a cool way to find land for pennies on the dollars through tax auctions. 
But I found it out. So I contacted the owner. I didn't go to the auction because one of the things is when you go to the auction, you're in a tough competition with a lot of people. Okay. So I got hold of the owner and he owned about $3,000 in taxes. He didn't want it. He said, I have to cut the grass all the time. I have uh, uh, forestry bills and he was an older man. And he said, I was going to build something, but I never got around to it. So I gave him 6,000. So 3,000 paid off the taxes and over 3,000 for him. And uh, and honestly, I was going to build something on this land, okay? But I decided at that point in time, I said, well, let me test the water and see what I can get for it. And lo and behold, when I ran the comps on it, I sold the land for $60,000. Actually, I had marketed for in the 40s, I got so many offers and I pulled it off from the MLS and I relisted it and I had two offers at full price. I probably could have got even more. But with the end of the day, I made $54,000 profit. Now, the picture there, somebody bought it and put a new home on it, and that's what happened with that land. So now, other uh, examples of land. Liz, if you can go back to the slide about my life there. Okay. On the top there, you see those new homes, and it says only $1. What happened there is uh, there is uh, in the city, in all, a lot of the older cities, they have different districts. You have aldermen. They have neighborhood stabilization program. And a lot of now, you probably heard of opportunity zones, right? When I did this, there was no opportunity zone back then. This was over 20 years ago. But what happened is the city, I talked to the aldermen. One of the good things, and this is golden nugget for any of you here, it doesn't matter if you do land investing or fix and flip or rental properties, is... Um, you want to really get to know the aldermen. You want to know, get the districts in your city because number one, they can get you properties. So if you're looking for fix and flip, if you're looking for rentals, they can get them to you for $1. They're looking for people that buy this property, fix them up and put them back in circulation. So what happened here, I bought, uh, we bought four city blocks for $1. So the city gave us four city blocks. There were some houses on the blocks that they said, you know, people lived in them. So what they did, they gave, they gave grants to these people to fix up their homes if they wanted to stay there. Otherwise, these homes were going to get demolished. And we built 23 new homes. We built actually um, two spec homes, and then we sold all the other one based based on the spec, spec homes that we built. But we, the, the moral of the story, I got a whole land, all these city blocks for $1. And the city also built the sidewalks, built the lights, built all the back alley, the infrastructure, everything to support it. They just wanted the developer to come in. Now, this stuff happens all the time. I was actually talking, I live in South Florida in Boca Raton and Delray Beach, it's kind of going the same way. So a couple of years ago, I uh, I have a son that lives there. And so there are some vacant lots, but some vacant land and some homes that are um, abandoned. So what I did, I called the, um, the uh, building and zoning department on Delray Beach. And I was like, uh, out of curiosity, because I realized a lot of the stuff was owned by the city. So I said, out of curiosity, what you want to do with this vacant land and lots and homes? And they say, you know, I left a message just to tell you how much they want to work with investors. I left a message within an hour, I got a call back. And they say, we're looking for developers to buy this land and put new homes and, you know, demolish the ones. So the city, again, even in this day, even in places like Delray Beach, want to work with investors that do these type of things. So there is a plenty of opportunities out there for doing this. So we're going to talk, you know, um, I do wholesaling. I travel a lot. That's why you have the pictures on the right there. Um, I have the cost costume here in Halloween. I'm going to get dressed like Cruella de Vil. That's why I have the costume there. That's my car. Uh, it's a Morgan. Uh, my dog, actually, she's here with me. Um, we go on the beach every day. I travel. This is a picture of me in the outback right now in my RV. Um, so you never know where you find me. I'm like that little gnome of Travelocity commercial they had a few years ago. So I'm kind of all over the place, okay? Um, the other building here on the left, like I said, we're not going to talk about this, but I have done a lot of rent as well. I got into rentals in 91, in wholesaling in 93, before it was even called wholesaling, was calling flipping contracts. So my experience is pretty broad, but tonight we're going to talk about land. 
And Liz mentioned this, actually the anchor woman there from NBC News Miami interviewed us together. And then um, this, I believe, was at the beginning of COVID, right, Liz? Was it within the first year after COVID hit? And then I guess she was, uh, she said, I want to do this. She wanted to get into fix and flip. So she came out, one of our students. And then we got interviewed two more times separately. Once Liz, that she said, you know, she'd said on uh, national TV, oh yeah, she was broke, you know, <laughs> but now she's not anymore. And then uh, I, um, I, I also got to interview uh, separately as well. I also write for REI Wealth, Realty 411, and other local newspapers. So we're always out there trying to give information and empower our people. Uh, this is the retreat we did. Elizabeth, you want to talk about the retreat a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, sure. So we host a retreat about once a year, sometimes two, depending on what's going on. And women fly in from all over the country. We had women from the Netherlands and Canada as well. Um, at the last one, and we just teach on real estate. So we'll bring there and you're able to come in and talk on all real estate and we take you out into the field, everything like that. It was a lot of fun. It was just a couple of weeks ago. It was actually in between hurricanes, Dana. So we had Hurricane Helene, the retreat, Hurricane Milton. <laughs> it worked <laughs> like just conveniently that weekend. We were right smack dab in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, so we have women that come from all over the country down to Fort Lauderdale and we spend a weekend just really pouring into them, helping them understand. I always tell them, if you leave with a question, you didn't get the best out of this weekend. So make sure you ask all the questions that you have. I bring all of my coaches in. So if you see us on stage there in that bottom picture, we'll all come in and help you guys and talk the entire weekend. It was really, really good. All right. All right, Laura. Again, uh, we have the C-book. I really suggest you download it because we have a lot of information that applies to land, but also our type of real estate. We talk about how to find the leads. We talk about how to analyze deals for either wholesaling, buying, hold, and fix, and flip. Uh, we talk about um, how to write contracts, how to sell property, different exit strategies. So it's definitely a lot of good information that we share for free. Yeah. Okay. So the agenda today is land. So if you're here to hear about land, what you can do, you're at the right place. Uh, we're talking about how to build wealth with land, finding undervalued land, creative financing options, remote land investing, exit strategies for maximum profits, and what uh, most of the common challenges are when it comes to land. So a lot to cover here in less than an hour. But for anybody here that says, you know, I want to, see more about being part of the community and get the support and also to learn land, uh, residential. Uh, we do mainly residential and land or also new development construction. I actually just did a new training on rehabbing properties and we're adding mobile uh, modules on new constructions as well. I would suggest you book a call and uh, we are, you know, our assistants are gonna drop a link here to book a call with us. And now, if you are interested in land investing or, or you're interested in any other strategy, I will suggest to book a call right now. For the early ones, for the fast action ones, I'm actually gonna do something very cool for you. And I will tell you at the end of the presentation. So go ahead and book a call. And uh, as for the ones that say, you know, I wanna talk and see how we can become part of the community and train. Because one of the things is about real estate is kind of be like in a candy store, right? You go in and you try a lot of different candy. Maybe you like wholesaling, maybe you're going to rentals, maybe you're going to buying land, you do fix and flip, you do new construction. And something will pull you more in the directions. You will feel inspired more. So that's the importance of and the great beauty of real estate. That's why I've done a lot of things over the years. Right now, I'm more into high-end uh, rehabs. Uh, luxury properties. Um, I like that because you just add a zero to your bottom line, profits wise. Um, but the thing is, it's like there is a lot there. So um, go ahead and book a call, see how we can help you in growing the community. And uh, like I said, for anybody that wants to take a fast action, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, give you a special bonus here at the end. Okay. So let, let's get started. Okay, so what is land investing? 
Land investing is basically, Elizabeth, did you put any slides that you want me kind of go over with them or? Uh... No, I just, you just told me you would explain over them. <laughs> Okay, good, good. So land investing is, like I said, they make only so much land, okay? A, an interesting concept I came across with land is that it was in Hawaii. I started actually investing in Hawaii back in 87. And when I started investing in land, uh, investing in real estate, I didn't realize that there are two types of land investing. There is what they call the fee simple and the lease. Fee simple is where you most of guys assume that when you buy a piece of property, you buy the land underneath. You know, now there could be mineral rights, it could be air rights, you know, you need to make sure if those are included or not. But the thing is, that's fee simple. Lease is you really lease the land where uh, the property is. This happens a lot of commercial properties, for example, right? So the thing is, um, this was very interesting, and I came across this in Hawaii, where you could buy these amazing houses for a couple hundred thousand dollars, but the land was worth like two, three million dollars and the lease was coming up in five years. So if you didn't buy the land or you didn't have an agreement to buy the land, guess what? You would have to move the house. So the thing is a land investing is very crucial. Personally, I suggest that you always invest in land at least fee simple and that you can have the rights to the land. Don't lease the land. But land investing, like I said, they make only so much of it. In Hawaii, 80% was already built of all the land available by the end of the 80s. When we went back there last year, Liz and I and Alex, my other daughter, was here online tonight, um, nothing was built new because anything else is only agricultural and they're not going to let anybody else. So now they demolish the old buildings and put new ones, but there is only so much land on the island. So land investing is something that is very um, you know, lucrative. A lot of people buy land for pennies on the dollars. I'm going to share with you here when we talk about land leads in a couple of uh, minutes, how you can get really hot leads on land for pennies on the dollar. So how to build wealth. Okay, so there are different ways you can take approach when it comes to land, okay? You can buy land and hold on to it. Um, now, as far as, uh, um, like I said, you know, I was talking actually with somebody in South Florida and uh, in Davis, South Florida, he bought an acre of land back in the 90s for $5,000. And he said, now the land, he built a house on it. Now his land, just the land, is worth almost a million dollars. You know, one acre in prime city. That's just the land. That's what I even taken in consideration. So there is one thing you can do is really get into uh, investing in land and uh, to hold on to it for future uh, profits. The other thing is you can also rezone land. Okay, well, so an important thing you need to do is rezone the land. So, for example, you can rezone land from agricultural to commercial or residential. Okay, when you you have to look at what the trends are in the area. You know, a lot of times you might come across properties that seem like they were residential at one point and then they got zoned commercial because obviously people make more money with commercial. Now, it's not necessarily you make all this more money with land by rezoning it to commercial. You have to look at what is the proper use for the area. So it might be that residential might be the best use for the area, or you can do commercial, or you can rezone it also for uh, mineral rights. Okay, some areas are very important because of the mineral rights. So, for example, if you're in certain areas where it seems like there could be important mineral rights or you have survey for mineral rights, you could buy land for pennies on the dollars because of the mineral rights in the area. Okay, and so that's the thing it is. You have to really study, number one, the best use of the land for the area. Second of all, is, a, is it better to get a rezoned? you know, from the present zoning. It's not really a big deal to add land rezoned if the city or the county see that that is the best use for the land, okay? But all these things have to be done to see because you might be able to buy this land for really cheap and then, you know, this land is gonna be worth more just because you rezone it. The land doesn't change is what the use of the land is. Okay, now finding undervalued land. This is my favorite part right here, okay? Uh, like I said, first uh, research market trends, 
Okay, so want to see what is the best use for the area. And, um, and I want to share with you a couple of things. For example, um, you, you can find a lot of land, like I did, with tax delinquent. The thing is, one of the things I always say is that not everybody wants to be in real estate, believe it or not. A lot of them say, you know, they buy a piece of land and um, they just don't want to deal with it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't want to build on it. So tax delinquent properties, the tax delinquent land is huge. Okay. Uh, you can find land before it goes to auction, which is the best thing. Or you can find land OTC over the counter, meaning it went through the auction, nobody wanted it. Because most people are looking for, you know, let's face it, they're looking for structure, they're looking for buildings. Personally, I like to buy land better because it's like having a clean slate. It's like having a blank canvas so you do what you want. When you go to these tax auctions, and I, you know, I would invite you to attend some of them. Um, they sell land. They, I even saw selling cabanas by the pool. They sell, you know, those little pieces of land where the billboards are. Don't you think those little pieces of land where the billboard is allowed to be are worth a lot of money? Um, I went to an auction once and I didn't know about this, right? This was 20, 30 years ago. And I didn't know, and they were auctioning off these uh, pieces of land, like in the middle of intersections and things like that, for like $100, $200. And on, on some of them, there were these billboards. And I was like, why would anybody buy that? Just imagine anything on this land, the billboard, you get that too, and you don't have to pay for it because it's already zoned and ready for that. So now going back to the tax property, you're going to come across a lot of these pieces of land where people don't want to land. And uh, I actually came across an investor. That's what he buys. It's only land that is tax delinquent. And his other strategy is he wants to buy land only on water, even if it's in rural areas, on rivers, on lakes, on streams, and so forth. And he buys um, super cheap Okay, pennies on the dollars. And the, the thing is, he sells this land really for 50, 60% of the value, but he buys it for nothing. Sometimes he gets it for free. Um, OTC, when your land that goes back to the city, so the city then doesn't know what to do. Remember the example I talked earlier where I bought this land for $1, right? This was land that went back to the city and the city said, I don't know what to do with this land. And when a developer come along, they said, just give me a dollar because it, there has to be some monetary consideration to make this a valid deal. And they sell the land. So uh, some of the things I would suggest you do is look for tax delinquent land, tax delinquent property, either the before it goes to auctions or after the auction, which is called OTC. Another thing I did with land is uh, uh, buying at auctions. And at auctions, I, actually one time, this is really cool, I bought this building and there was this piece of land next to it. I didn't even know I bought that land. And I bought the land, so all of a sudden I had this building and a piece of land to it. The city asked me, says, we want the land to build a dog park and we're gonna give you a tax break for the next 10 years if you give us the land. So naturally, yeah, of course, right? So I was not gonna do anything with this land in the middle of the city. It was next to the building that I bought at auction. Um, so that's very good. Other things you can do is like when you go around, you know, driving for dollars or around neighborhoods, you come across all these little pieces of land in between houses. And a lot of times this land is honestly kind of forgotten. I came across a lot of land where it was owned by people. They inherited it, but they didn't really want it. They didn't know what to do with it. Right. And they see this, okay, yeah, just take it off my hands. So if you're interested in new construction, if you're interested in um, you know, doing something um, like redevelopment or even rezoning land, definitely look up vacant lands as you're out there driving around. We actually had a student, uh, Danielle, mm -hmm. She was investing in the Tampa area and uh, she stumbled across some land and she's like, I'm just going to do land from now on. And she was wholesaling land. So she's driving around the neighborhoods in the Tampa area and find these little pieces of land in between our houses that were kind of left there, contacted people and then wholesale land. One of the things that you're going to find out is that 
people are much more receptive in selling these random pieces of land in between places than, uh, you know, than anything else, even pro even properties themselves, because most of this land is always kind of forgotten. It's been left there and nobody's doing anything with it. So there is a lot of potential here with land. Like I said, you can wholesale it or you can buy this land to redevelop it yourself as well. Liz? Okay, so let's talk about money here. Let's talk about financing. So um, one of the things I did is seller financing. I've used this a lot for land. Again, you come across a lot of this land and they don't want to do anything with it, really. You know, so even if, um, you know, you say to them, okay, you want 5,000, 10,000 for this piece of land, uh, let me go ahead and finance it from you. And then when I build my house or do whatever you're going to do with this land, I pay you off. There is very little resistance to seller finance land. I can tell you that right now. The other thing is a land contract or a contract for deed, as they call it. So basically, you make an agreement that when some event happens in the future, you're going to uh, cash them out on the land. Could be that uh, when you're going to put a, a new property on there and when you're selling this new house, you're going to pay them off whatever you agree with the land. OK, so that's also very, um, you know, a good way to control land without really buying it up front. And also you can uh, private lenders and partnerships uh, like the new construction that I did of those houses, uh, those two spec homes. Uh, a dollar, I could come up with the dollar, obviously, but to put the spec homes and sell everything else, I use private lenders, I use partnerships. So I had, um, some of you know that I went into syndication in 2001 and I was able to raise all this money. We were buying property at auctions and do all kinds of things. But also uh, some of these lenders, you know, say, yeah, sure, we're gonna go in with you in doing these new developments. And uh, so they put up the money for us to put the spec homes there. OK, and so when I approached the alderman, I said to them, look, I have the funds, I have the plans because they wanted to see architectural drawings, what you plan to do. I just need you guys give me this land or any land that you have. And that's what they did. So once you enter into the system, by the way, you know, I got offered all kinds of random pieces of land over the years, because once you are in the system, it is easier for them to see that you know what you're doing. OK, so uh, private lenders and partnership is another way to do this. Remote investing. Again, you can do this land from anywhere, right? It's like wholesaling. You, you know, one of the concepts about wholesaling, and that's why you honestly like the old way of what we called wholesaling. We didn't call it wholesaling back when I started in the 90s. We call it flipping a contract because you know, you're not really selling property, right? You're selling a contract. Same thing for land. Just imagine now, if you did uh, invest in, let's say that you, know, you, you look for land all over the United States. Um, you look for tax delinquent property all over the United States. You look for uh, any type of situation all over the United States. There's not much competition. Land investing and high-end property fix, uh, flipping is actually the two areas of real estate that less competition. Okay. Um, so with land investing, you're going to come across all kinds of lands uh, anywhere. And uh, you can invest. You just put this property under contract. And yes. Even with the county, you can put properties, land under contract. You don't have to perform on that contract until you have a buyer in place. So for example, you have this land and it's owned by the county because nobody bought the deduction and you know there is $500 owed on taxes on it. You have two options. Either you can go ahead and pay the $500, but you know the best way to do it is put it under contract, have 30 days to perform and say, okay, now I'm going to find somebody else to buy from me for a thousand or two thousand, and that's totally fine because the county already owns it, right? The, at this point, they don't have to go to auction; it's already went to auction, so they're open for things like that. You know, they do kind of a land contract or contract for deed. 
So um, there is a lot of things you can do virtually with land. And it's easier to do it than something. Because when you have a building, right, you have to get inspections done. You need to sell boots on the ground over there to show the property. Land, you can just send somebody there. It's not going to go anywhere. You don't have to put a door or a lockbox on it. It's a piece of land. So, you know, at the end of the day, maybe you have some clearing done if it's, uh, you know, trees or stuff like that. I've done that. It's not super expensive, uh, but then you send somebody there. You don't have to have a boots on the ground or a lockbox or all of that. There are companies out there you can send. You can even look for companies, you know, um, in Facebook Marketplace or Thumbtack or this. They go and take pictures for you. They can uh, do survey on the land. You can do all kinds of things you don't have to do in person. So to virtually send land is actually much easier than do properties. Right? You can see how that makes sense, right? Okay, so exit strategy for land. So, for example, like I said, uh, you can go ahead and buy it and then rezone it and sell it, or you can buy it and sell it later. You can do a leasehold situation like they did in Hawaii. You know, um, I was talking to one of the students yesterday, actually. She might be here tonight. I don't know if you're here. If you're here, I'm not going to say your name. But she had a really cool idea because a lot of the things like in Hawaii, the Catholic Church owned 80 percent, most of the land. I think all, almost all of it, honestly, 80 percent or more on the land. And so they didn't want to sell it. And so they were leasing the land. But guess what? After the 55-year lease term, a lot of this land was coming. Either they were going to renew the lease. And some of them they did. But a lot of them, they say, well, we don't know yet. OK, so if you wanted to um, safeguard the house that you had on the land, you should have bought the land. So there are a lot of companies there that own the rights to the land. And you cannot get the land. So you can lease the land, especially in commercial. This works uh, well with commercial property. Most of them lease the land. They don't actually own the land under the building, okay? And you can wholesale it, you know, like you do with properties. But like I said, to do a virtual wholesaling with land is even better because honestly, you don't need a lockbox. You need, need boots on the ground. You tell somebody, hey, go there, look at the land and see if you want it, right? So it's a much easier way of doing it virtually. Okay, so um, are you following me, everybody? I know I'm throwing so much information here so fast. Is this okay? okay if you give me the chat, is this is good? What some of your takeaways? So some of the stuff that uh, you liked about land investing. If you can oh, give yeah, us, they're, they're loving it. I see okay. all the faces and stuff. They're happy. You're throwing okay, a good. lot out there, but it's all good stuff. I'm not seeing the faces, guys, because I'm focusing on the slides. But here in a moment when we don't share anymore, I would love to do a little more interaction. Um, but it doesn't make sense. And how many of you are scared to do land, but now you see that maybe land is even better than doing properties? So... You know, and, and this it can go, it doesn't have to be exclusive, okay? So now when you go out there and look for properties, you know, like for example, when I do a search, uh, one of the things I talk about, MLS strategy, agent referral, some of the strategies we talk under wholesaling, but you know, what if you put residential, but also land? Don't discard land. Land is easier to wholesale than anything else, right? Yes, definitely. It's uh, you can wholesale it, and people want land. People, de developers, builders, you know, they want land. Or you can do it yourself, obviously, if you're in a situation you want to do new construction. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about some of the common challenges here. Uh, first of all, you have to like find out what the zoning is, right? So when you come across a piece of land, before you, you know, you can put a contract on the land just to kind of like anything else, you know, put the contract, make sure you and the seller are on the same page. But then after that, you want to really research zoning. You want to find out what is going on. And this will be a contingency on the contract, by the way, okay? Because if there's something there, you cannot do anything with this land. It's not buildable lot or it's a zone for something that you have no use for, you can get out of the contract. So that's something should be on the contract. Environmental concern. Again, you know, you want to check with the environmental uh, office and make sure there is not something that for some reason that cannot be built on, okay? There may be uh, chemical waste or um, 
the other things that, you know, is a wildlife preserve or something like that. So you need to make sure this is a buildable lot and then you also want to clear with the environment, okay? And then uh, financing option. Now, this is a really cool though about land. Like you can use seller financing like we talked about. You can create partnerships. The other thing is, let's say you come across a piece of land and you can buy it for $20,000, okay? And um, the land... Um, it's twenty thousand dollars, and let's say that the land is actually worth fifty, a hundred, right? It's worth a lot more. So what can happen is that because the land is worth more, that you can use this land as a down payment for whatever you're going to build on. So, like for example, when we build these new homes uh, in this uh, uh, development, what happened is um, we bought that one for one dollar, the whole area, right? But when we had the property, the land appraised, it was much more than a dollar. So then we use the land value as a down payment for the construction loan. So if you have a land value of 20% or whatever your construction loan is, you can see now the lender is going to take your land. Even if you paid the dollar, but the, war, the land was worth a lot more, they took that to give me the construction loan on the land. Okay, so the land actually can be used as a down payment for your construction. So if you buy it at the bargain, that's even better. Okay. So, Liz, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, sure. So, um, I was trying to find a deal, a testimonial of someone that posted where it was specific to land, and I remembered this lovely lady named Erin. Um, she was a student of ours, and she, uh, I couldn't remember all the names of the people that did land, but I remember this one particularly because she posted several times over a series of a couple of months about this specific deal. So she closed, it was her very first deal and she net 60 K after all expenses, 60 K on her very first land deal. And what I like about this post is she says that's a year full year salary. And considering I've never had the opportunity to earn a full year salary, I'm really proud of that. And so I was really, really happy for her. And then she posted a series later where she posted the car she bought for, because of this and, other things just on one deal. And then honestly, I just saw her post recently. She just closed on another deal that she's turning into a short-term rental. So it's just some ways that she kind of brings in, but 60K on one land deal, how would that feel on one deal to make 60K? One of the things I also want to mention about land, um, the thing is the value of land sometimes is more about the potential of what you can do the land and the land itself. Yes, you know, it's hard to sometimes get comps on land, right? Because they say you have these random lots everywhere. But if you look at the potential of this land, like me, with that house that I bought it for $6,000, um, you know, the land, but the, because of the potential of the neighborhood and what the houses were worth after the fix up, which are about 250,000 at the time. So somebody to pay $60,000 and put a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred, I think he spent about 120, 30,000 for construction. It was worth it, right? So the land is worth it. So yes, I bought it for 6,000, but I sold it for 10 times as much because the after uh, build value was so much more. So that's the thing you have to see with land. The land had, doesn't have a value like real, you know, like buildings, right? Buildings, a brick and mortar type situation you have. Sometimes land, that's why you can jump from a zoning uh, from residential to commercial and the land exponentially can go up 10, 20, 30 times the value because of the possibility of what you can be put in the area. If you build a hotel here or offices or medical space, it's much more, it's worth much more than a just a house, right? So that's why, that's why my own dad, like I said, he took all this agricultural land and he rezoned all of that for commercial and residential and made a ton of money doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a few students that have a few uh, land deals under contract or are trying to put under contract right now as well in the group. So it's very cool to see. Yep. Okay, so like we mentioned earlier, now, first of all, what are some of the takeaways that you have from the presentation today? Anybody want to share some of your takeaways? Maybe the land is, huh, it's easier than you thought? No, they they put some through. Um, so they got more into uh, more question-based, and I told Brianna was telling them, we'll definitely answer those, but 
they said, I always thought it was one way or another. I thought property would be easier. It's a great option. Land sounds like a great alternative to properties, things like that. Well, as I wouldn't say the alternative. I would say something to add to your, you know, toolbox, okay? So that as you come across vacant land, let's say you're driving for dollars and you come across these vacant little lots like I did many times, it's you can do the same thing. And honestly, they're much easier to sell even in a virtual because think about it, you know, you just tell somebody, go there and check that land up. You don't have to have somebody meet them there and show them the land, right? So it's much easier to do and you can do it anywhere all over the country. Um, you know, it can be done definitely, it can be done virtually. And it's easy. You just put property under contract and flip it. Great. Okay. So, um, Lisa, you want to go over a little bit about, and I know some of you have seen it before, but the thing when it comes to land or it comes to residential or it comes to commercial, it's all going to follow these three main areas. You've got to know three things. Right, you have to find where to find the leads. Where you're gonna find the leads? You have to find marketing, okay, and you have to have a system in place. Now, let me talk about lands, especially when it comes to um, specifically uh, leads. Okay, so where do you find the leads? We talked about some of the ways to find the leads, and. Um, and one thing I'm going to do for anybody that booked the call earlier, I'm going to give them a really cool chart on how to find leads. I'm also going to give you links of whatever county you want to work with or state you want to work with. I, I will give you a link that can take you to where the tax delinquent properties are to find land in that specific county. Okay, this is very hard to find if you go out there because a lot of people don't know. So for anybody that booked the call earlier, I don't know if anybody booked, um, that is what I will give you. I'll give you actually specific links of where you can find these uh, tax uh, delinquent property for land in your county. Okay, and also I will give you a cheat sheet of how you can find the leads for land. But land, lead generation is huge. So if you want to be part of our community, obviously, uh, we talk about how to get leads for wholesaling, for fix and flip, buy and hold. And I'm also going to add a section just for land. Then we're going to do, what do you do? What is the owner of this land trying to do? Right? Like the guy that I came across or a lot of, or even the city. I, you know, we don't want this land. We want a developer to come in and build up, or we want to put a park on this land, right? And um, what is the owner of this particular land? Because land has been there, especially land that there is no demolition going on. It's just vacant, it's sitting there. What's the story behind it? Why come there are all these houses surrounded by this land? So there is always a cool story, by the way, on these vacant lots. I can tell you that. And the thing is, where are you going to get the money? Now, the good thing about land, it's much easier to get owner finance than anything else. Because a lot of time, the owners of this land just either inherited it, that's what I ran across, or never got around to do whatever they wanted to do with it. Okay. So then we go into marketing. Um, like I said, you don't have to exclusively say, I'm going to just be doing land, you can do that, you know, but the thing is branding, this is so important. People are gonna Google you, people are gonna find out who, what are you gonna do. So if you, land investing is really part of what you wanna do specifically, you need to put that in your brand when you uh, build your profiles, okay? Then um, after branding, you have to do KPI. And anytime you do any type of lead generations, you need to find what is, really working for you, okay? So for example, there are some areas where you can, like agricultural areas, you can get this lot of lands around bodies of water and so forth, and you have a huge return. Um, I was talking to somebody who works in some specific counties, I cannot say where, where they are, they're in the middle of the United States, and he said these counties basically are a gold mine, okay? He gets all the properties, anything that nobody buys, at the auctions, he, he buys everything over the counter and he has to pay only the recording fee. 
Now he takes these uh, pieces of land and he sells them on eBay. He sells them on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. And uh, he gets them for free. We did an event together a few years ago and he actually gave away land for free. You know, when we raffle prizes, you know, yeah, we actually raffled lots of land. And I look at them and he's like, I just got that piece of land for 60 bucks. Literally was the cost of recording. And it was a, a land that was on a stream where you could go fishing like a camping lot. So, you know, understand. And once you have the KPI, you know where to do it, then you can go on a massive level. This goes for anything with real estate related, right? Um, we, so there are people, you know, if you follow, one of the things I say to them, if you follow what I'm telling you and what you do, we can get into it very quickly. If you follow what I do, you can get land deals under contract in the next three to four weeks max. Okay, it's easy. Land, honestly, is much easier than our properties. There are a lot of less resistance from the owners and uh, it's easier to finance. I love land. And then you can scale it. And like I said, doing virtual investing with land across the United States, that's easy. Because the thing is, you don't have to worry about boots on the ground. You don't have to worry about, you know, somebody, you can, anybody can go there and take pictures. You can find these people on Thumbtack to do that. You don't have to worry about disclosures, repairs, or anything like that, right? You just have to worry about the zoning, environmental, and that's something you can do on the phone. Then um, you have to have a system depending on the strategy. Land is a little different than if you're doing a building, if you're doing, um, you know, a commercial or so forth for a house. So you really have to develop a little different strategy. So that's why land is a little different, but trust me, in a way it's easier. And then you can create automations, but the bottom line is consistency. One of the things I do when I work with some students is that the first thing I want to do is, first of all, choose areas that you want to invest. Now with land development, I'm okay with you choosing more than one area. So you're not as limited because honestly, there's a lot, lot of less legwork that has to go into it, but then you have to have consistency. So every day I want you to set the schedule what to do. Uh, one of the interesting thing I was telling Liz when we have the retreat is that um, um, at the retreat, you know, we, we ask the students, what are you struggling with? What is something that we can help you with to move the needle? And I would say about 35 percent, one third was about time management and organization. Right. And the thing is this, um, when you start doing something every day and we manage the time and you do it consistently, it's, it exponentially grows, grows. There is no, it's foolproof. It has to, because your focus goes in consistently growing the business. But if you do something today and then you pedal back and skip a couple of days, come back this week and you're going to like take two steps forward, two steps back, you never move, right? So consistency is different model. So all these things have to get together. Now, I would like for you guys to do it very quickly here. And you know, especially now, since we're talking about land this evening, which is kind of a niche in its own. So even if you have done real estate before, I want you to talk about, I want you to think about land. And if you have no idea how to generate leads for land, how to follow up or how to talk to the owner or how to build a brand KPI, you mark yourself red. If you feel like yeah, you have a little bit of an idea how to do this, it will be yellow. And if you think like you've mastered this, again, we're talking only land here today, I want you to uh, grade yourself green. So um, Liz, you wanna talk a little bit about this? You're usually better sometimes at explaining this. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically, you're just gonna grade yourself here on what you understand. So red means I don't know anything. I Usually if you're new, you haven't done a deal, you're gonna color this whole thing red, okay? because you haven't mastered it just yet, really understand it, have done all the steps. Yellow means usually my ladies that have done at least like one deal or a little more, yellow means that I'm really starting to understand this, I'm close to mastering it, like I've started taking the steps. And then green is like, I am the next Lauren Liz, I could coach this tonight, like this is great, pull me up on stage, I have this, all right? And so for now, I see some reds coming in, I see a yellow, good. So for now, I want you to kind of grade yourself here where you are. Now, being all red, and I have people fill this out because I want you to see how as you attend more of these, 
like Maria and Dana, I'm sure at one point you were all red, right? So it's nice to see that you have some yellows coming in. And so you get to see your your shift in the understanding of real estate and the business start moving to all greens. We have a student um, that used to post this. She's all green now. But when she started, she would post in the Facebook group and she was all red. And then it was, you know, she had red and yellows. Then it was red, yellow, and a green and less reds. And then slowly as she posted every few months, it became completely all green. And it was pretty, pretty great. And I just like to see that. So I have everyone kind of fill this out when they start and then they'll revisit it every couple months and watch their understanding and their success grow within the program. All right, so I see yeah. some yellows, reds, um, between yellow and red. Yes, red, yellow, still need to learn more. Great. And, you know, with real estate, it's always a learning process. You know, I'm learning something every single day. But that's what it keeps me on my toes, right? After four decades and being in this business, that is what keeps me on my toes. That what keeps me wanting to also teach you. The best thing for me is to see, you know, people that I work with that are brand new to real estate doing their first deal or really breaking through, or building the life that they want. And I met several of you at the retreat, and uh, I had the privilege of talking to some of you. And for me to be there and help you uh, come across, um, you know, whatever your dreams are, you can achieve it with real estate. That's the beauty of real estate, okay? Um, now, uh, one thing I want to make clear with land, I don't want it to be right now, a lot of you are new here, a brand new, haven't even done a deal yet. So I don't want to be exclusive for some of that. Just add it in your toolbox. Don't be afraid that when you walk out there and you go driving around and you come across vacant lot, imagine the possibility. A lot of these vacant lots, especially if there is no structure on it whatsoever, you no know, even any demolition, there is a story behind it. Find out what the story is. Somebody maybe has this land. They don't even know they have the land. That's what I came across, actually. Some people don't even know they have it. Um, but there is such control in land. I, this is kind of funny. I inherited uh, some land in Italy. Uh, one of them was a piece of a mountain, okay? It was a piece of a hill. And uh, when I went there, there was an abandoned marble cave in that hill. Um, my great grandfather had a marble cave and it got grown over, overgrown with stuff and there was a marble cave. So I sold the land. And then the other one was, <laughs> I inherited this ditch along this road. And uh, it was like, why? what's the importance of the ditch? Oh, that ditch was important because guess what? The people that owned the lots didn't have access to the road. And so I inherited this ditch and I was able to sell the ditch um, because people then had access. So obviously this ditch was very valuable and I owned it. So land is amazing. There is so much things you can do with land. And uh, what we would like to do here is invite you to learn more about it. And, uh, like, and the other thing I wanna do is this. Um, we're going to go over here very quickly about this. Now, for some of you that are students already, okay, um, and if you're really interested in land, let me know. Okay, there is some special thing I will do for it. But since I see, honestly, quite a bit of interest, there were over 30 people here this evening interested in land. And I know uh, one of our uh, managers, she told me, says that we have a lot of interest in social media about land. So, you know, for anybody here, Liz, if you want to tell Julie or anybody, uh, probably we'll do a, some training just specifically on land here moving forward. We do uh, have but... some training on it, but I think a more, a different one. I know we have training because I had to create some for buyers. Yeah. One of the big revolutions, so I stumbled into land over the years and I never turned away from land. And actually land is probably where I made the most money in, uh, in a lot of deals. But I also came across somebody. There was a, um, I one of the writers, gurus about real estate that I mentioned to you guys and some of you that know me, Robert Allen, back in the 80s, he wrote about nothing down. And he also mentioned land. Well, I knew one of his prodigies, one of his students, and made a ton of money with land and buying properties, land that is tax delinquent. So I learned about 20 some years ago from him on how to tap into tax delinquent property with land. 
And so for anybody that's going to book a call this evening, if you decide to become part of the community, I will actually share with you. I have created with him a long time ago. It's in my Google Drive. I had created training on about getting land from tax delinquent property. Now, even Robert Allen, the reason I brought up Robert Allen, Robert Allen actually said that he never met anybody that bought as much real estate in such a short period of time like this particular individual. And I have built a training with him. One of the things about real estate, not everybody can be a coach. There are a lot of people that can be investors there, but there are a lot of people that don't know how to teach, how to invest. And uh, so he came to me and asked me to try to put this together uh, on how to teach people what he was doing. He goes through times where he buys 10 to 15 pieces of land a week. Not a month, guys, not a year, a week. OK, and like a lot of this, he buys for 20, 30, 20, 30, 60 dollars for recording fees. Um, so that's all he does. You know, that's his thing. It has a really cool way of doing it. Uh, I personally just, you know, he, he does a lot of small deals, though. You know, don't think that all this land is a lot of worth of money, but he gets a lot of this sold on land installments agreement. So he buys this land for 60 bucks, $100, and he sells it for $1,000, $2,000. So he does a lot of volume in that, okay? Um, so what we want to talk about, and, and it goes beyond tax liens, Dana, it's, uh, it's tax delinquent property, but there is a cool way to do about it where he also gets lands for free through tax sales. Like I said, I have all the resources and the training. I'll make it actually available for the students. So you will get the treat there. Um, so the, uh, the way we work with our training is that we have a kickoff call. Everything starts is with a kickoff call. So our next kickoff call is actually this Thursday on the 17th. And um, so you will have to be part of the kickoff call. During this kickoff call is uh, I'm going to do a little bit different this time. OK, so we always ask you what strategy you are interested in. But if you're specifically interested in land as your primary strategy, I want you to let me know because I'm going to create a specific game plan for you. OK, would you like to know how to tap into a lot of land here in the next month? OK, so if you're new and you say, you know what, I really want this as my main strategy, then, you know, I want to make sure this is not another shiny object for you, that I want you to make sure that this is what your your heart is into it. But I will give you a specific game plan that I developed when I was doing land training a few years ago with this other person. OK, I haven't done this training in a while just because, honestly, I've been so busy teaching other things, but I do have all the training <laughs> available for it. So uh, we have a game plan. Then the next thing is we're going to give you the steps on what to do. The roadmap. Oh, my gosh. This is like there are 280 some modules, but you don't have to study all of them. OK, so that's why it's important that you attend the game plan, because like, we're going to specifically tell you what you need to do. And for any of you that want to do land investing as your primary strategy, I will create a specific game plan for you. But here you can find anything from wholesaling to rentals to flips, all the contracts that you need, the scripts, the forms, anything you need is in this portal, in this roadmap. So there is a ton of information there, anything you need and more. Even the land contracts that we mentioned, I have it in there. And last but not least is the support. And I'll let Liz explain that because she does a much better job in explaining that than I do. Okay. And then as far as support... Uh, this is where our expertise really comes in. It's not just me and Laura. We have a set of coaches. And I was doing an investing interview today with one of the students. And she she came from another program. And she said, the access that I have to you guys, I haven't seen anywhere else. She's like, I'm in other programs. I have I some with thousands of people in it. And she's like, my proximity to the coaches is what I... Um, value in this program outside of just the mindset and it was just really nice to hear that and so what it came down to was the support this is how she became successful in real estate was through the support that she received because you can get this info anywhere right you don't know if it's right or not right anyone could post on youtube but one of the things that she said was this is my proximity to the coaches you are literally around us all the time we feel like family and there was just Tons of comments going through as she was saying this with everyone that was part of the student base agreeing to this. So this is where the support comes in, especially when you're in the middle of the deals, 
time is of the essence. You you need to talk to someone. You need to be able to have that those answers specific to what you're going through. I was Saturday morning and I was in, I was like typing away in Facebook, basically one-on-one with one of my students as she was trying to wholesale this deal and time was of the essence. And we were just going back and forth in the group. So here's how you get the support. We have almost daily group calls every single week where you can get on and ask questions with the coaches. Now we do not get off until all answers are done. So all of our students know, we have a few students on today, I won't ex- expose who they are, but they know that we stay on until. We'll answer as many questions as we can. We will help you as much as possible. The other thing is we offer something that I don't see, and if it does, they came out recently because I haven't seen it since we started offering this, is office hours. So I came up with this idea on a cruise actually, I was like, okay, I have a lot of students being like, Liz, I just wish you were there next to me as I was making calls, as I was setting up my system, as I was doing this, this, and that. And I said, okay, well, how can I be in like a million people's homes (laughs) at one time, right? Well, office hours. So what this is, is you get on with us for about an hour and a half to two hours and you just work on your business. It's just like this, but you know, we're all muted and you ask me questions in the chat. And so you're able to ask myself and Laura, we both get on questions in the chat. So like we have office hours tomorrow and you're able to work on your business. And people have said that this has been a game changer. They'll make live, they'll call sellers while we're there because they know we can answer their questions as they're on the phone. They're able to, you know, go through deals with us, analyzing deals right then and there that they're trying to comp. They ask us questions as they think of it. They don't even have to wait for a call or get into the Facebook group. This has been the game changer, I feel like, for my students, being able to have us there. Yeah, it's like an adult study hall. Yeah. And so I was just like, what could I do to really help these ladies out and be there? This was what we came up with. Love it. It's honestly one of my favorite calls of the week because I'm in there. I feel like a like an octopus with eight like legs trying to answer all the questions that are like coming in, but it's a lot of fun. And then we have the Facebook forum. So this is a very poppin' forum. Every time I go in, there's lots of questions. And this is for when you're in between, right? And it's not like basic questions that you can find in the training. These are deals, deals that are being done where the ladies need help. And so in between calls, they'll go in because time is of the essence. All of my coaches are in there and we're able to go in and work with them and help them and things like that. So you have the Facebook forum. Then we do, you know, contract review. This is something that's a really big game changer. We will help you analyze deals on calls, but you can also turn in your contracts and we will review them for you so that you make sure that you have important contingencies in there and stuff like that. I can't tell you how many times people will say they watch the training on how to fill it out. They'll send it over and they're missing like pricing and contingencies to protect them in case they need to get out or anything like that or renegotiate and stuff like that. So we actually review all of your contracts for you. Then we also give you two free general admission tickets to any of our retreats that we host. And then you get free access to any events that we host, you know, anywhere we go as far as like our master classes or things like that, of course. But you get two free general admission tickets to our big retreats. And then we do intensives as well every couple of months it's all day where you work with myself and lauren a couple of my other coaches it's virtual sometimes we'll offer it like a hybrid where you can come in person as well students love that i've had students fly from all over the for the country for these events and you just get to hang out with us and work on your business so this isn't just like a big q a this is okay this is where i am in my business this is what i need to do to move forward So there's a lot of support here. I've been told by many coaches, I'm in a coaching mastermind. Um, He's a coach that coaches coaches who says we offer so much support, but in real estate, you need this support. There's a lot of doubt and second guessing yourself and lean issues and seller issues and land. And what do I do if the house is completely just a tear down or Hey, it has electrical. Hey, it doesn't have anything. How do I price this? There's a lot of questions that will come up as you start doing deals where this support is amazing. By the way, tomorrow's office hours are at 8 p.m. We're doing an evening version tomorrow, Maria. So you get to come and hang out with us and it's just really good. Laura and I are very active in this group. We really try to make sure our students are moving forward as quick as possible. We take personal accountability. And like I said, at the very beginning, 
one of our students, she went on and on about this today in the best way. I didn't even ask her to do it of how the proximity has been the biggest game changer for her to be close to people who are doing what she wants to do, being able to ask questions and, you know, and we get it all the time where they say, I just feel like you genuinely care and we're not just a number. And I would say that we try really hard to make sure you never feel like that, that we're there as much as we can be. We will check in with you. I know some of my ladies on have seen us like, we'll chase you. Where are you? What are you doing? How are you? Like, are you okay? You know, we are good at accountability and making sure that you stay strong. I actually have an entire person that makes sure that my students are doing well. And if they're not trying to find out how we can better support them. And so this is kind of where that level of support comes in, where I feel like it separates us from the rest. The other thing I will say about separating us from the rest, because people will always ask, how are we different from all the others? Laura has been in this for four decades. She has been through three recessions. She has come from hell and back multiple times in this business. And I tell her all the time, cause she's like, I didn't have a mentor when I started on the investing side and she paid over a million dollars in lawyer fees. And, it, and she says, you know, that seems crazy to everyone but there weren't mentors out there. There were not people who could help me through this. There were just books. And I said, well, you had to go through that. You had to learn everything of what not to do so that you can help the ladies now. And that's what is powerful is her decades of experience that she's able to give forward. And the other thing that was mentioned today in the call that it's just perfect timing with this is she said, I just like this community. I like the women here. I feel like we all try to help each other. There's no competition. There's no cattiness. There's, and I don't really ever see that. I've never really seen that. But I feel like that's really important when you're in an all women's group to have people that really just want to see you succeed. And all of my students, my advanced to my brand new, they really just want you to succeed and they'll share it all. I have a student now that we brought up as a coach just recently. She did her second coaching call last week and she um, and she's just she's laying it all out there. She's telling you everything, how she finds these deals, how she's running numbers. She's teaching you how to do do it yourself projects. She's a fix and flipper. She also does rentals, Airbnb and wholesaling. But she is just like phenomenal. And I feel like that's just the kind of group that Laura and I are trying to create is this movement. I'll let Laura explain that of women, because it's really hard to find that here. It's really hard to find, you know, if you go to any, who's gone to real estate events and it's just filled with men and you're just like, oh my goodness, I feel like a fish out of water here, right? And that's why REAW was created. Yes. And um, uh, just make sure that, you know, anybody that wants to learn more about the community and how we can help you, make sure you uh, put the link. The other thing is I, you know, I'm going to be back home tomorrow and, um, and, I want to actually, anybody, I'll be on the kickoff call this Thursday. And I want to know anybody on the kickoff call, I want to know exactly what you want to do. So anybody on the kickoff call this Thursday, I will actually give a game plan with me. Okay, I'm going to be home here for the next few months. So I usually go on and off with this. And the other thing is that I gave you is the peace of mind guarantee. So basically, at the end of the day, you're going to get this training for free because the thing is, a peace of mind guarantee says that we're going to stick with you at least until you do one deal, okay? The deal will pay more than enough for the program. Hey, we had one check, Eliza, you didn't share with that, but, you know, one check, she paid for this program three times, right, with just one oh, deal. Oh, yeah, it was a foreclosure, it wasn't land, that's why I didn't share it. Yeah, <laughs> so, but the thing is that you, at the end of the day, you can have this training for free because we're going to stick with you until you do one deal, and the deal will pay for it. So you have nothing to lose here. You have the community. One of the things I want to, like Liz says, you know, about build, my dream is this. I want to build a movement of women that really teach other women on where they got so they can bring everybody at the same level so that nobody's left behind. Nobody feels like, oh, well, they took my money. The coach is over. I didn't close the deal and nobody care. That's where... Um, that's where we are different than anybody else. Because at the end of the day, you put your trust in us to help you. We're going to give you the trust 10 times back. Okay. And the thing is, you just, I just, the only thing I ask of you is a couple of things. First of all, please follow what I tell you. I cannot stress enough that the women that follow what I said, and I have a couple of examples here. We just did a retreat two weeks ago. 
And one of them, she actually put a contract on it today and she's working on a second contract. So if you follow what they tell you, and, and happened to be land, by the way, two, two lots of land she came across. Uh, so perfect timing. Um, so with that said, if you, tell, if you follow what they tell you, you'll be successful. I have no doubts. I know what works and what doesn't. I have a good sense about things, even in a changing world. And the other thing is that you want, you really want this. What are your goals? What are you trying to do? Like I was telling this particular student who put the contract today, I was telling her, you know, she has hard. I have to work this job, even weekends. And they call me and they pull me in all different directions. And I said, but I says, you have to hang on to the fact that soon enough you can quit the job. You can spend time with your little girls. You can be at the beach and still do real estate and travel and stay at different Airbnbs around the world with your little girls. And you don't have to be pulled in 10 different direction. And she said, yes. And that's what gets me going every single day. And so what is your why? Why you want to do this? And it has to be something so big and compelling that nothing is going to stop you. Because if I've been successful and uh, other women have been successful, why not you? Why not you? Right? So that's what I want for all of you. So hopefully you want to join to the community. We have an amazing game plan call, um, kickoff call this Thursday. I'm going to do things a little differently, like I said, for the ones that kind of come in and join in. And if you're interested in land investing, I'm going to do something even more different. Sorry, my dog is going crazy here. Um, I'm going to do something even more different where I'll give you a game plan specifically. And I will share with you some special resources on how you can tap into dozens of pieces of land in a matter of weeks for really cheap to nothing and so, if you're a student that's on tonight and you want what she was offering as a bonus you already get that so course. don't yeah so don't worry <laughs> don't be like oh my gosh i didn't get that all you have to do is email into our csm and she'll take care of you uh yeah everybody that's part of our community anytime i come up with another bright idea you guys get it so <laughs> don't worry <laughs> Great. Okay. So anything else we want to share? Uh, any questions, by the way? Let's uh, take care of some of the questions while they book, which by the way, um, you know, you have to book the call this evening to be on the, tomorrow's already Wednesday. So it takes about a day or so to, we have a couple of ladies here, they're here today. They will be talking to one is Amy and one is Brianna. And uh, you'll be talking to them and getting you on board. And I look forward to meeting you uh, on the call on Thursday. So if you're interested in getting this going, it's perfect timing. Holidays is coming up. Let's make some money. Yeah. All right, Laura, you want me to read you the questions? Yes. All right. I'm not going to scroll back up just because we've had a lot of comments. So if you have any remaining questions, just let me know. But I'll start with the one from Lori. Um, I'm coming across properties that include one or two vacant lots. Is it possible to split the land from the main property and sell it to a different buyer or hold on to it? Yeah, well, yes, but you have to find out with zoning if you can split split into different parcels. You know, at the end of the day, you have to find is this one parcel and what does the zoning allow? You know, there is some restriction, like for example, you have to have so much on uh, frontage into the street, the depth. So there are different types of things depending on the area, but I would definitely call zoning department and find out from them. And yeah, that's, that can be done all most of the times. We've had that happen a few times, even with our own students, um, where they had to split the property or there were two lots under one, like one address, things like that, where they had to split things. So yeah, it's always some crazy things going on. Yeah, yeah. All right, any other questions? Let me see. I know there was a few, but let's see, let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Just to give you an example, uh, there is this property, uh, there are two acres of land. <laughs> I'm kind of second guessing if I should pursue it, but it's on the Gulf uh, with a private day, the beach and um, uh, Gulf of Mexico. And, um, and the reason I'm second guessing is because this particular place got hit by hurricane twice over the last two years, but it didn't flood. Uh, but anyway, there's these uh, two acres of land that can get all this land for $1 million. Now, each um, half an acre on this particular place sells for 500000 okay? 
So I'm trying to actually get through with it. It's owned by a trust and they inherited this property. There is a house on it, um, but there is a ton of land around it and it has golf access with private beach. Um, so I'm trying to get through to them. And that the other thing is I already checked with the zoning about subdividing because I can sell each uh, half acre lot for 500,000. Do the math guys. Right? So that's a lot of money. So for more $1 million investments, I'm going to get $3 million profit. I mean, granted, there are some other things that need to be done, like surveys and things like that, but still, it will be close to $3 million profit. Now, I don't know because of the hurricanes people want to move in, but that's another thing I need to research <laughs> <laughs> because this place particularly got hit by hurricane twice over the last uh, couple of years. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, though, Floridians are pretty crazy. We stay here no matter what. You could demolish the whole home, and we're still here. And maybe that makes us a little insane. But I lived in Cape when Ian hit, and that destroyed the outside. Luckily, not my actual house. I got scot free there, and um, I was still there. I still own that house. Yeah. So. I I came across this because honestly, I wanted to buy for my own use. And there is this gorgeous house that was built in the 1920s. It's been vacant for many years. Um, but like I said, it's owned by a trust and there are some issues there. But at the end of the day, I'm still want to buy it because the land is so valuable. Yeah. All right. Any other questions while you have us? Land, land investing about the program, anything like that? Before we get off, I'm trying to buy time just in case because I just saw another person book. So I just want to make sure that I'm buying time so you get the bonuses. Laura's never offered the um, that one-on-one -on -one game plan option during the kickoff call. So we definitely want to need a plan for that to be longer. But I think that was amazing. What do I need to do to get on the call? Oh, okay. So you would book a call through the link that's right above your comment, like two comments above. Uh, team, if you want to reply to her too. And then as well as just talking, if you're interested in joining the program, this is for anyone that's interested in joining the program. And what I will do on Thursday, depending on, and I'm going to keep this for the first four people who sign up um, to be on Thursday. Um, I will actually give you the game plan call after the main call. I usually schedule like a couple of weeks later, but let's hit the ground running. Okay. So the other thing that's happening, are we still doing the onboarding, Liz? You already had four people booked, by the way. Okay. Yeah, onboarding starts on Monday. But we're starting on Monday after next week, right? This upcoming Monday. Okay. Uh, but this is the last time I'm doing it this year. What is the onboarding? For four consecutive Mondays, I will... This is huge for accountability, by the way. I will tell you guys what to do every single week. Once you guys did the game plan call, you also get the checklist on what to do in the first four weeks to really get deals going. On top of that, I will be there to go over the checklist personally with you for the next four Mondays. So that's a huge because this is really keeping you accountable and keeping you so you can start doing deal. My focus is right now for anybody joining this kickoff call on the 17th is to have deals under contract, if not closed before Thanksgiving. And I know when I say that to people, people say, oh, my God, it's like this particular um, lady that I talked to the retreat and I told her I wanted to have I talked to her last week and I said I wanted to have two contracts by next week. And she's like, no way. It's no way. She already has one and second one right in today. So it's definitely possible. So, yes, yeah, so hopefully we can see you on Thursday. And uh, any other questions? Um, no, we're just working within the. Um the chat about if they can't make it Thursday to the kickoff call, I said, we'll work with you on that. So we could talk more about that during your scheduled call. Okay. Well, great. Well, thanks everybody for being here. I'm going, Eliza, if you want to leave it open for a couple minutes, I'm going to take off. I'm sitting here in a parking lot in front of Target. So I need to get <laughs> back on the road and there's no AC and it's hot. So I'm going <laughs> to get going. But I will see you guys on uh, uh, Thursday, some of you. Let's get this going. And remember, with the peace of mind guarantee, guys, this is basically free. You do one deal, we're going to sure we stick with you. The, our training for six months, but regardless, if you do the work, and you follow the steps and you participate, there is no reason you shouldn't be doing a deal even the next month. But with that said, I will leave the peace of mind guarantee saying, and we're going to stick with you regardless until you get one deal closed so that you know you can go sleep at night and say, I haven't invested this money and I'm not getting anything for it. We don't operate that way.
Okay. So I want everybody to be successful. And then if you know on top of that is gravy, the first deal will pay off for the program. So thanks everybody for being here and I will see you Thursday. Definitely. I'll keep it open for a couple of minutes just for those that are still trying to fill it out. Don't worry. Or if you have any questions or having issues booking, you can message in the chat.